Okay, so today I'm going to talk about white muscle disease in goats. Um, so it's a degenerative muscle disease. Sometimes they call it nutritional muscular dystrophy. It kind of depends on the species, but we're going to talk about goats for the most part today. Um, it is caused by a deficiency in selenium and or vitamin E, and we're going to talk about that relationship in a little bit. But selenium is an essential trace <coughs> mineral, so like with any vitamin or mineral deficiency, you're going to have some problems. It's named for the pale color of muscle that it causes, and it's associated with selenium deficient soils and forages. So forages grow in the soil, if the soil is deficient, the forage that is being fed or grazed on is going to be deficient and then we're not going to have enough in the body. Pen fed goats are obviously more susceptible to this because grains and dry hay lack selenium in general. Um, and then if you have too high levels of sulfur, calcium, and copper in your feeds, it will prevent selenium absorption in the body, and it affects skeletal and cardiac muscles in all breeds of goats. So, selenium and vitamin E work together in the body and they cannot replace one another. Both are part of the enzyme that prevents free radicals from causing cellular damage. Uh, so that can really go into a lot of different areas of the body. So we need selenium so that goats can reproduce properly, lactate and give birth property, properly, and then just do basic body functions properly like muscle movement and urination. So both together help to protect brain cells, assist in thyroid function, help the immune system to function properly, and again, prevent cell wall damage. So if we're deficient in this one small trace mineral, we're gonna have a lot of issues in the body. So, selenium de deficiency in soil is pretty widespread. If you look at the lightest blue color, those are the most deficient areas in the United States. So pretty much where we're at is a deficient area. Um, the medium blue color is areas that are, are both adequate and inadequate. It depends on where you are locally. And then the darker blue is where selenium levels in the soil are adequate for farm animals. But then the black shows where toxicity may be a problem. So there could have been reports of death due to overconsumption of selenium. We're not really sure for that, but it's really varies where you are. So knowing where you live and doing soil testing is a huge part in management of this. And then I really like this graphic over here because it shows sort of where the world is at as far as selenium deficiency goes and where we're headed. So the blue is what shows progress in becoming um, or having higher levels of selenium. And you can see that there's not a whole lot of blue when we look at this map. So for the most part, selenium deficiency will be a growing problem in the future. So some symptoms. It can affect both newborn and adults, um, but you're gonna see it more in newborn and growing kids. Um, and they'll really kind of look like this. So it can be hard to tell that this is an issue, but you're gonna see a lot of stiffness, uh, not a whole lot of movement, or it'll be difficult for them to stand. And then they can sort of develop symptoms that are similar to pneumonia, but that comes from the disease already affecting the heart. And if it gets that far, we really can't turn back. In adults, you're gonna see a lot of reproductive issues. So you're gonna have abortions, retained placentas. You may not conceive at all, but the issue with this is that these are also symptoms of selenium toxicity and not just deficiency. So if these things are occurring on your farm or in your herd, you really need to do some testing of your soils and your feeds to see if your levels are too high or too low. And then severe stages, again, muscle weakness and weight loss like in this picture, and then you might have impaired vision and staggering, and once you get to that point, you can't really treat it anymore. So these are more pictures of what the disease sort of looks like. So the top of this goat, for the most part, looks normal, but if you look down here at his legs, he's sort of backwards on his pasterns and not standing upright on his feet, and that's an issue, and that will become progressive and then this kid's back legs are really splayed out and that will be progressive as well. And then this sort of shows the whitening of the muscle and where that name comes from. So treating this, 
There's some couple different things you can do, but like I said, knowing your area is the best way to prevent this. Uh, you can also do a CBC test and see in your goat's body itself. If they are selenium deficient, you may not live in a deficient area and your forages might be fine, but if you're feeding um, too much sulfur, calcium or copper, like I said earlier, it could be pulling the selenium from your animal's body. So knowing your area, knowing your animal, first step in prevention. And then what we typically do uh, at birth is do selenium and vitamin E injections. Uh, this is Bozy. It's sort of a lower concentrate of selenium and vitamin E. There's some other ones out there like Musi. It's higher concentrated. It's for cattle. Um, really just use whatever your veterinarian recommends and whatever dosage, but know that it is toxic. So selenium addition to feeds is federally regulated because of this. So you have to be really careful in what you're feeding and what you're injecting because over supplementation can cause a lot of issues and lead to death. And it's a good idea to um, give boosters whenever your vet recommends, but also during pregnancy because it will get transferred both through the placenta and through colostrum. So I just kind of wanted to show some comparison to other species. I thought it was interesting because we usually hear about selenium deficiency a lot in lambs called stiff lamb disease. That's the same thing as white muscle. But what's interesting is goats have a higher susceptibility to selenium because they have a much higher requirement than sheep do. But you usually hear, hear about it in sheep a lot more. Um, it occurs in cattle and it's usually called nutritional muscular dystrophy. Uh, it can occur in dogs. They'll call it a muscle myopathy. It's not as common. We're pretty good at adding, adding vitamin E to feeds, but the issue with dogs is that there's a lot of different muscle myopathies out there, and so it could be hard to determine where that's coming from. I thought it was pretty interesting that this does occur in shrimp, and then horses as well can get white muscle. Any questions? Questions from the audience? Rose Nutrition, I guess I have a question. Uh, is When they had too much copper and there were some other minerals mm -hmm. you mentioned, that was bad for selenium. Is it, does it prevent selenium from being taken up into the body mm -hmm. rather than drawing selenium out of the body, right? right? Mm -hmm. It's the uptake yep. of selenium. <coughs> does anybody know right now how you could get 100% of your selenium requirement, daily requirement for humans? Does anybody know what, like you could go to the grocery store and grab something and on the back it would say 100% selenium requirement? And the reason only the reason I know that is because remember I make my own dog food. I buy these packets of the tuna that the little packets you've seen them, and you can open them up and there's no draining. It's just tuna. Look on the back of one of those packages. A hundred percent selenium in one of those for me, and I guess for the dogs as well. So yeah, whenever you think of selenium, always think of vitamin E. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like a marriage kind yep. of thing. It's just you can't think of one without the other. And the uh, interesting thing about that, I didn't really know there were those many sites of toxic selenium levels. Mm -hmm. But I know Indiana in general needs to have supplement because the soil is uh, deficient. Yeah. So I don't like tuna, but like if somebody, <laughs> if somebody ate too much tuna, could we reach toxic levels of selenium? That's sure a good question, probably. Mm -hmm. just filter it out. Yeah. To some degree. It's, there's probably a wide margin of safety, but I don't know. Because now when you were saying doing the CBC on animals, mm -hmm. then in, uh, <clears throat> in books someplace, you know, there's a book called Clinical Biochemistry that you can always look in to see normal blood levels of everything. Like next time I run across one of those books, I'm going to look. So selenium, when they do the blood test, I'm sure they can tell you how much selenium is in the blood and see if it's in the, what's called the normal range. Remember? Yep. Yeah. Yep. So it'd be interesting to know that because um, I'm not sure what it is. Okay, if not, 